I've been told by my team and the casters involved that this is the best Elestral's Clash that has ever happened. And we're going to experience it together. I haven't seen it yet. Bean Soldier at 3-0 is taking on PK Sparks in a showdown that may echo for ages to come. Don't forget to pre-order Daybreak at shopelestrals.com. Orders over 50 USD. Get the Stone Tablet Fair Guys promo. You don't want to miss it. Let's kick this one off with Bean Soldier opening 12 packs in search of a tsunami. He hits a Pandora's box and then the hype he's looking for. Well, Chariot, yeah, oh yeah. Tsunami! Let's go. Oh, Freaks. <laughs> Bean then lands a full art Poseidon, which doesn't help him much, but the next card he hits is actually insane. I go wins. <gasps> Holy s! <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! Wait, that's dope. Let's go! <laughs> that's so sick! Oh my go, god! Go. You can't play it, but that's fine. I know cool. I can't play it! There's no way PK can top that, but let's see his 12 packs. A few hollows like in Frostix and Circle the Sky and Bronze Glow, but nothing really cooking for PK. Divine Blessing is not a bad pull, but something tells me PK Sparks isn't thrilled. Leviathan. Welp. Despite his rough pulls, PK picks up a few awesome cards from teammate Poke Aim, including two Gorgon's Gaze and a Pandasin for his Earth Fruit deck. I'm really curious if and how Bean Soldier is going to use that stellar Tectoris. Let's hear from the man himself. What's up, my Netflix? It's your boy Josh from the Elastronauts, aka Bean Soldier, and today we're going up against PK and the Earth Beatdown strategy. As a fellow Earth Beatdown enjoyer myself, I'm fully capable of knowing what that deck is capable of. And I'm not gonna lie, I am scared. But if there's one deck that I'm confident can take it down, it's Warfrost, baby. It's always been Warfrost. Really excited for the clash today against PK. And as always, Go cry a scorch. Aw oh, man, no Tech Taurus, but Morfrost is definitely looking strong, especially when paired with Cryovern and the Lavalitz. I hope PK is ready for this one because Bean Soldier hasn't lost yet, and I don't think he wants to play around. Today's decks have been inspired by my team's techs. We have seen Trifernal win, we have seen Imperial win. So, with on the backs of Clovey and Panzer, I hope to bring Centarber a win. This is a genuine strategy I am bringing. That I am not bringing this just for the meme. I actually think this is my best course of action, putting up a strong de defense and drawing in the cards until I can set my big board up. And I feel like that's the best way to defeat uh, Frost right now. And utilizing cards for offense, such as Tectoris, where when I have a lot of spirits on board, I've gotten Tectoris up to an 11 attacker. And Equilinks able to help disrupt the plethora of back row my opponent is going to have including PTA and Gorgon's Gaze and Shield of Achilles and literally everything you could have. Hopefully these five cards are going to bring me the success I'm looking for. And I promise you, if I get the opportunity, you're going to see how cracked Panzer is. Wow, I love the Centaurber Stellars being added into this one. That could be huge. I've actually played against a similar deck with Clovey and Panzer before, and it can be really, really good if you're not prepared because it gets really, really bulky and it gives incredible draw power that can be tough to take out. I cannot tell you how excited I am for this clash. These casters have been hyping it up all week long, and I've been very pumped to jump into a commentary of this one. Bean Soldier gonna get it kicked off, but PK Sparks opt to go for a mulligan looking for a new hand you get a little bit more luxury when you're using a defensive deck like panzer that can heal up but bean soldier gets his strategy executed perfectly here the optimal turn one play in a more frost deck is sending your lycan form to the underworld and grabbing two more more frost out of your deck into your hand grabs an indus and an abominable very standard stuff here and now indus can hit the field and send two additional more frost forms to the underworld which is absolutely insane Indus, Lycan, Terror, and Abominable form an incredible core for Morfrost, and he's able to send his Terror and another Lycan to the Underworld, fu further fueling up his strategy of boosting his Abominable form for later in the Clash, and we'll have to see how PK responds. That Morfrost is going to be easy to take out, but don't forget, when Morfrost Indus form is destroyed, it can actually take down a face-down rune as well. 
PK goes for the Equalinks here. He is going to get Poison Dipped Arrow, but he can still take out the Morfrost. Honestly, not a bad exchange for PK. He can simply opt to not set any face down runes here and just go for the attack, take out the Indus, save his back row, lose his Equalinks to the end of the turn, but he didn't have to go all out using Demeter right now and popping the face down rune and all these different things. All he really had to do was just attack. And ultimately, I would say that turn, while annoying for PK, ends up in a positive way as Bean Soldier going to use his Morfrost here to fuel that Underworld and his hand even further. A second Morfrost with his third in Underworld. This deck is very expensive to run, right? Morfrost consumes a tremendous amount of spirits to get the engine going. But once you have it going, Abominable Form is such a powerful Elestral, it can oftentimes just be too tough to take out. So we're going to see another Indus form from Bean. Again, he's going to be using a ton of spirits to make this combo work, but this is probably the last time he has to do it. He might not even do it this time, as he's got to feel that his underworld is pretty stacked up right now, and the Indus form, again, going to continue to provide pressure on PK's back row, so he's not going to comfortably be able to set runes face down. He'll take one spirit of damage and get his second Equalinks out. This is big for PK. This is exactly what he's looking for as his statue Demeter from Shattered Stars hits the field as well and can get enchanted with many, many Earth Spirits, providing the Nexus power of Equalinks to destroy the face down rune of Bean Soldier. Now what that face down rune is, is gonna be very important. If he hits a shield here, that's gonna be massive and he does a huge hit for PK Sparks. He's gonna opt to Earthquake the Indus form as well. PK going all out here. And now his Equalinks is able to attack and deal some massive damage. And importantly, more importantly, he can set a rune face down and allow that to exist in the field without the threat of the Indus form as two spirits are going to be taken from Bean Soldier, bringing him down to 11 as he looks to fight back in this one. Bean Soldier drawing for his turn. We know he has plenty of power with his Morfrost, but going to go for the Lava Lith. A huge play here. PK has got to be devastated. Does he have an answer to the Lava Lith? Bean Soldier does have to declare his target. Does he go after the face down rune? Or does he go after the Demeter first? He's going to go after the face down rune. It's a Gorgon's Gaze. PK was ready. The perfect play he needed right now as he can not only stop the Lava Lith from taking something out, but most importantly, he can stop it from attacking his Equalinks this turn. And now PK can simply use the effect of his Demeter to buff up his links and take out the Lava Lith. And here comes Panzer, baby! This is the card PK wants to start to use as Panzer can Nexus Spirits around the field freely. And not only that, but heal your Spirit deck or enchant them to Panzer, further bolstering his defense. So Panzer is now going to be sitting with two Earth Spirits on it. That puts it at five defense. And now PK can heal an additional Earth Spirit, whether it be to his Spirit deck or onto his Panzer. He is going to go for it onto the Panzer here and make Panzer sit there with six defense. And don't forget, those spirits on field can be utilized by counter runes and invoke runes. So there is some value to that as well. PK going to play an Ambrosia here, that beautiful stellar Ambrosia. That's going to heal him up. But most certainly, he has a really offensive turn here. I'm actually kind of surprised because I feel like there was an opportunity here for PK to deal a lot of damage this turn. He's going to disenchant off the, equal, off the Demeter to buff his Equalinks and allow Equalinks to take out Lava Lith. But what I'm saying is he could have done four or five spirits of damage this turn if he kind of paired some of those Nexus moves around a little bit differently. But I think him keeping that Panzer in defense is exactly what he wants to do as it can hopefully set up his big strategy here. But don't forget, Bean Soldier is definitely not out of this one. Abominable form here, ready to deal some damage. And that's kind of some of the other reason why I feel like maybe just having Panzer in attack position there was worth more. Because Abominable is going to hit over your Panzer no matter what its defense is. So you really want to be able to put that pressure on. Now that Bean Soldier has this Abominable, he knows he can take out the Lynx. Assuming that face down rune doesn't stop him. And he feels more confident in setting his back row. So he's going to set three back row. And PK is going to look for a way to bounce back against an incredibly powerful Morfrost Abominable form. And he's going to find an Astrabid here. This is pretty big. Astrabid gives him an opportunity to find a little bit more resources. It could get him an Earthquake. It can get him a Key Gorgon's Gaze. A Tsunami. Something like that that could help him deal with this Morfrost. And now he's able to use that Nexus effect. Optic to Nexus off of his Demeter to buff his Panzer and rather go for the heal this time. I find that interesting. I think there was an argument to be made again to Nexus onto the Rabbit instead and keep your Demeter on the field because you might need that buff to be able to take out the Abominable later on, but PK might be confident that he can get another Demeter or maybe he already has one. 
One of the face down runes from Bean Soldier is an Ambrosia as a bait to basically get some healing here. That's going to give him a few extra spirits. He's grabbing some fire. That may be a sign that Lavalith is going to make a return here in this middle part of the clash. If you're PK, I'm definitely taking note of that because that Lavalith is very strong and he doesn't even need to take notes. By the time he would have had it written down, the Lavalith was on the field. What rune is it going to go after? This is a key turn for PK. The shield gets blown up, much like PK's Equalings took out a shield. Lava it takes out of a shield of its own, and PK's in a very rough spot if his last back row cannot handle the offensive onslaught. The rabbit goes down. The Panzer needs to hold its own, and it looks like it's going to. It seems as though Panzer can take on the hits, and it's going to stand strong, and now it's going to be bolstered even further by the power of Foley Forest, and a Demeter, so PK had everything he needed. This Panzer is going to be decked out. Not only does it benefit from its own effect bust bolstering its defense, but now it gets the benefit of the Foley Forest here, which can heal it and get all sorts of things going. He gets the attack buff. He gets the defense buff. This thing is sitting at, I have no idea, probably like 11 defense right now, if we're being totally honest. I'm not sure how Bean Soldier is going to hit over this. And PK's laughing. He's counting it up. He's got five spirits on his Panzer. That means he's eight plus another five defense. He's 13 defense. You see him laughing. He knows he's got something really strong right now. But does Bean have a way to get rid of it? Indus form hits the field. That's going to provide some potential rune removal later on and potentially fuel his deck a little further. PK in a position now where he might be looking to try to get out that big Centaurber soon. Clovey could also be a big play if he finds it, but it's going to be Tectoris! That is massive! I bet you Bean Soldier's wishing he brought that stellar Tectoris to this one because this thing is stacked in terms of power and he can put the offensive pressure on anything he wants right now. He will Nexus onto the Tectoris, providing more defense more bolstering and he can actually heal an additional spirit where is he going to put it he looks like he's going to go to his spirit deck with this one understand that panzer has enough bulk to withstand the offensive pressure from bean soldier and he can actually pull a spirit off his panzer now because of the foley forest to heal even further so while both these casters were getting pretty low on spirits ambrosia and the other healing mechanics are actually keeping them in the clash PK Sparks, is he going to go offensive here with his Tectoris? That's going to be a big decision to make. He's going to count up how many more Frost Forms do you have in the Underworld? PK trying to understand, okay, this is where Abominable is right now. I need to make sure it doesn't hit this attack stat because I need to be able to make sure that my Tectoris and or my Panzer can withstand those attacks. Although this Tectoris is at an astronomical level of attack, as is the defense stat on this panzer pk looking he is gonna attack it seems into the abominable form bean soldier making a choice here as the abominable is the biggest threat and he is gonna let it go down huge place from pk utilizing panzer to get those spirits on field and then take advantage of tech Taurus in a very epic way let's see what bean is working with with just six spirits to go as it did seem as though he took a spirit of damage there he's got another ambrosia Huge heals there from Bean Soldier as he can now regenerate three additional spirits. PK and him are both laughing at how much regeneration has taken place in this clash as they are going back and forth and back and forth. And if you're Bean Soldier, you got to ask yourself, how do I get rid of this Panzer? What is my out here? I have a lot of spirits on board and some of my removal options aren't going to help me. And as long as Panzer has more spirits than Tectoris, I can't laurels it. This is an interesting predicament to be in, but he's got Astrabit, so he's going to be able to see three cards at the top of his deck and see if any one of those can be the answer he needs to get rid of this Panzer. Bean Soldier going to look to position his Lavalith into defense now, showing that he's taking a more defensive posture, understanding, hey, I'm going to take some spirit damage. I might as well reduce that or eliminate it entirely. And PK continues to have the freedom to Nexus around with Panzer's effect and heal up more spirits. Oh my goodness. This has been incredible to watch. Panzer and Elestral that otherwise doesn't get a ton of play providing incredible support right now. Takes out the Indus form. Smart choice with no back row. PK continues to heal every turn. Here comes a re-enchant on the rabbit. Bean Soldier's fishing for something. He is looking through his deck to try to find a key card here. 
to get through this incredible setup that PK has. A Panzer and a Tectoris, both of which are very strong. And here it goes! PK Sparks lands the Clovey! Bean Soldier, I think I just saw the spirit leave his body right there. As this Panzer can now Nexus onto the Tectoris, opting to not Nexus onto Clovey, rather. And heal up even further. He's actually running out of Earth Spirits here to regenerate his whole board is basically there and now he gets to play the earthquake and take out the rabbit and ensure that that's not a threat and he can press onward here with his tectoris and this heal draw engine with clovey and panzer let's see we're gonna see a response the tsunami comes off tectoris forced into defense position pk does have a face down rune being soldier down to just five spirits he's got a lava lift He's got a Tectorus that he's got to try to beat in defense position. That's providing the primary offensive output. There's the Abominable form. Bean Soldier is not out of this one. Lava Lith shifts its position into attack position. Now the attacks begin. He's going to be looking to try to take out the Clovey and the Tectorus on this turn. The question will be, what is PK's face down rune? Does he have the ability to stop this barrage? Tectorus goes down. That is big for Bean Soldier in his quest to climb back, and Clovey also goes down. And only Panzer stands strong in this one as PK draws an additional card and follows up with another Tectoris. You get rid of one and another one hits the field. And now Panzer can continue to use its Nexus effect. He's gonna actually choose to Nexus off of the Demeter, an interesting choice, and heal an additional spirit. And he's gonna put it in his spirit deck. Tektor is bolstered up by the Foley Forest and another Earthquake from PK, taking out the Abominable form, ensuring that it cannot provide any offensive output for Bean Soldier. This healing has been incredible for, for PK. And now Tectoris can attack into the Lava Lith, and it's going to be met with an additional Tsunami, sending it to defense position and keeping Bean Soldier in this clash with three spirits to go. Can he find another way to get his Morfrost out? Forced to expend to draw here in the later stage of this game and finds his third Ambrosia. PK throws his head back. Only thing he can do is laugh, but there, make no doubt about it. He is not thrilled about that as Bean Soldier grabs a, another Leviathan into his spirit deck. That tells me that he might be looking to play his third Tsunami of this clash as well. The Lava Lith attacks and takes out Tectoris, and PK left with just Panzer as his defensive pressure. Here comes a Circle the Sky tech, moving from the Panzer onto Foley Forest, allowing him an additional draw, and then he can actually get that Spirit back by utilizing Panzer's effect to be able to move it back onto the Panzer. Very cool strategy from PK Sparks here. This is a really cool idea that can combo incredibly well with Clovey. He'll pass it right back to the Panzer and he'll heal an additional spirit. And Panzer again continues to sit here with just astronomical defense that Bean Soldier simply has not been able to find an answer to get rid of. But this one is still very, very close as PK is going to be forced with a decision. Do I continue to stay defensive here or do I start to push offensively? He's going to actually expend to draw himself Looking for some back row. A well-timed back row play could be the difference in this clash. Bean Soldier is really thinking hard about his plays. Down to just four spirits in spirit deck and two on field. There's Keone. This means he's got no other choice but to get his abominable back. Bean Soldier going to disenchant off the Keone and grab his abominable form. There it is. Making its return his strongest Elestral that he can use, but is it going to be strong enough? Here comes the Abominable Morfrost. Cast out an expensive play from Bean. You can see a little bit of disappointment as he's still trying to figure out how do I position myself in a way to beat this Panzer. And PK responds with a poison tipped arrow, dropping the attack of Morfrost by two points. And that could be the difference of Abominable attacking over and PK in a position where he can expend a spirit to take out the Abominable. He actually chooses not to, it seems, but rather going to go and cast out a Rama Gem and search his deck for another Earth Elestral. He grabs Clovey here to pair nicely with Panzer on the following turn. And again, he can continue to next his spirits around. He pulls off the Rama Gem onto his Panzer further making it even bulkier. Again, we're talking about 
what I believe to be a 7, 11, something like 11 or 12 defense Panzer right now. He heals that up. They're doing a little counting, making sure the Foley Forest is working for him. Bean Soldier is exhausted as two Lavalits at this point. His Abominable form can only get so strong because it's based on the number of uh, Morfrost in the Underworld. It has a cap based on how Bean Soldier's deck plays. And he's just sitting here. How do I get through Panzer right now? And this is just a massive, massive play. Oh my gosh, he has the answer! The Gorgon's Gaze shuts down the effect of Panzer, making it so it only retains the buff from Foley Forest and PK Force to take a hit, as now he draws, looking for an answer with zero spirits on Bean Soldier's end. PK opted to not go offensive with Panzer the entire clash. He goes for all the draws, he goes for all of the healing, and Bean uses Gorgons in a way that nobody saw coming to prevent that Panzer's effect from being activated and allowing his Elestrals to attack over it. Very calculated Bean Soldier. This is a 0-0 clash with Clovey on the field. All Bean Soldier has to do is hit through. PK reveals his shield but doesn't have the spirits to use it, and it looks as though Bean Soldier walks away in this incredible clash and takes the W as PK Sparks is devastated by the results of this one. An insane clash where both casters went back and forth and PK set the defenses up. He held the line for many, many turns, but Bean Soldier, the veteran, the expert at Elestrals, found exactly the opportunity he needed. No back row. Gorgon suppresses Panzer's effect and he pushes forward with his offense to take the W. An incredible clash for us this week. Make sure you guys stay tuned for tomorrow.